The expansion of the United States Army during the Second World War was simply massive. In 1939, the entire United States Army, including the U.S. Army Air Corps, numbered just 174,000 troops. By 1945, more than 8 million personnel, men and women, would be in U.S. Army uniforms. And one of the challenges of that massive growth was to provide trained officers to lead entire new divisions of men in battle. The systems that the Army had used previously to commission officers, the United States Military Academy and the Reserve Officer Training Corps, were simply wildly inadequate to meet the demand, and so the Army started a new program, Officer Candidate School, or OCS. And over the course of the war, OCS would produce more than 800,000 90-day wonders to lead U.S. troops in the largest war in the nation's history. It is history that deserves to be remembered. According to the Historical Services Division of the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center, Army officer production evolved throughout the 20th century due in large part to the expensive manpower requirements of both world wars. Prior to 1916, aside from rare direct commissions, the path to becoming an officer in the U.S. Army was almost exclusively to attend the U.S. Military Academy at West Point or other military schools such as the Virginia Military Institute. In fact, the Historical Services Division notes, even that was no guarantee as the number of commissions available depended upon the number of vacancies in the force. That changed in 1916 with the National Defense Act. The act included significant reform of the U.S. National Guard, including the ability of the President to mobilize the National Guard in the case of war. But the act also created two new systems to create a pool of reserve officers, the Officer Reserve Corps and the Reserve Officers Training Corps. The Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, is a system of college and university-based officer training. In brief, the program offers scholarships in exchange for a commitment of military service upon graduation, and participants receive military training and drill. The Officers Reserve Corps, or ORC, was originally intended to supply the U.S. Armed Forces with civilian volunteers who were educated in military leadership and tactics. Essentially, the act stipulated any citizen who, upon examination prescribed by the President, shall be found physically mentally and morally qualified to hold such commissions could be made part of the ORC. Members of the Officers Reserve Corps served on virtually a voluntary basis, being paid only for the time that they served in actual duty, two weeks every two to three years. The system would eventually evolve into the Army Reserve. When the U.S. declared war on Germany in April 1917, the entire U.S. Army strength was 113,111, with only approximately 6,000 commissioned officers. Not only was this an insignificant size given the scope of the war the U.S. had just entered, but the experience of the Allies on the Western Front suggested that the U.S. should expect high rates of attrition once U.S. troops entered combat. The U.S. Army would have to expand massively. Within just 18 months, the time of the armistice, the U.S. Army grew to over 3 million soldiers, organized into 64 divisions. To meet the need for the officers for these divisions, the Army increased the pool of available candidates in Special Regulation Number 1. Officers from this expansion came from a number of sources, military academy graduates, members of the Officers Reserve Corps and National Guard, notably officers and men of the Philippine Scouts, a military organization of the U.S. Army in the Philippines. But the most significant shift was that the pool included simply college graduates and civilians, so long as they were between the ages of 21 and 27, unmarried and qualified via competitive examination. One example was Charles W. Whittlesey, a Harvard-trained lawyer. Whittlesey volunteered in May, having completed a summer training course via a civilian citizen's military training camp, part of a nationwide preparedness movement. The website History Because It's Here writes, By 1914, war swept over Europe, making military preparedness take on a greater urgency in America, including New York. Hundreds of men in their 30s and 40s volunteered for a summer camp at Plattsburgh Barracks, upstate New York, including Quentin Roosevelt and Theodore Roosevelt, Jr. The Plattsburgh camp, which continued into 1915, provided a supplement to the camps for college men and was officially known as the Businessmen's Camp because so many businessmen and attorneys, like Charles Wilsey, trained there. In practice, the men who trained at such camps were treated very much like the ORC, but they didn't have the military service commitment. After just three months Army training, he shipped out as a captain in the U.S. 77th Infantry Division, by September been promoted to major and given command of a battalion. During the October Meuse-Argonne Offensive, his battalion was cut off and yet held out until reinforcements arrived. The saga of the lost battalion captivated the nation, and Whittlesey, who had been practicing law just six months earlier, was awarded the Medal of Honor. 
More than 80,000 men were trained and commissioned as officers to serve the need of the American Army during the First World War. But after the war, the Army demobilized, and the U.S. Military Academies and Reserve Officer Training Corps produced enough officers to serve the needs of the regular Army and National Guard. But in 1938, with war clearly on the horizon and the need to expand the Army clear, Brigadier General Asa Singleton, Commandant of the Infantry School, first proposed the idea of an officer candidate school, similar to a program the U.S. Marine Corps had been using since 1891. Singleton's idea would not be adopted until 1941, under then-Infantry School Commandant Brigadier General Omar Bradley. The website of the OCS alumni organization stated in a feature in 2019, in 1940, General George Marshall recognized the absolute importance of establishing rigorous training facilities for new officers. The Officer Candidate School, OCS, was established in early 1941 when the Secretary of War, the War Department, and the Army Chief of Staff agreed that a training program was needed to quickly commission new officers. By the spring of 1941, the Selective Service Draft had brought nearly a million men into the Army. Leadership was needed desperately, and OCS stepped forward to fill that need. The Army Historical Services Division explains, OCS provided a flexible means of officer production because the War Department controlled the graduation quotas based on force requirements. During the war, OCS was conducted at 10 branch schools representing the Infantry, Signal Corps, Armor, Artillery, Coast Artillery, Quartermaster, Medical Corps, Engineering, Cavalry, and Ordnance Departments. A special OCS was also created at Fort Des Moines, Iowa to commission women officers in the Women's Army Corps and the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. The first 17-week infantry OCS course, with curriculum largely designed by General Bradley, started with 204 candidates at Fort Benning, Georgia in July 1941. 171 graduated and were commissioned second lieutenants in September. Direct commissioning did occur, especially for people that had special skills like chaplains, doctors, dentists, veterinarians, and lawyers for the Judge Advocate General Corps. And there was some direct commissioning of people inside war industries as part of what was called the affiliate program. But because of the effectiveness of OCS, direct commissioning was extremely rare for the ground forces. The program turned out to be highly effective so much so that advanced ROTC courses were discontinued with the candidates sent to OCS instead. The OCS alumni organization notes that those who survived the ordeal were commissioned second lieutenants, the famed 90-day wonders of World War II. The momentous decision to start a shortened commissioning program proved to be very wise as OCS became the leading source of commissioned officers during the war. Of the 800,000 or so officers who served in the army during World War II, more than half were OCS graduates and well over half the combat leaders were products of that system. Thousands of OCS graduates received combat decorations for valor. Among those was Robert Joseph Dole of Russell, Kansas. Dole had enlisted in the Army Reserve in 1942 at the age of just 19, been called to active duty in June of 1943. After boot camp in Texas, he was selected for OCS and was commissioned a second lieutenant in November 1944. The Washington Post notes that, like many in training at the time, he was wondering if he would ever see combat before the war was won. He was sent to Italy and, in February 1945, assigned to a company of the 10th Mountain Division, whose commander had been killed in action. He later wrote, I thought it was mighty odd that a kid from Kansas, who had seen a mountain up close just once in his life, would be assigned to lead a platoon of mountain troops. We Kansans didn't ski much. In April, he was leading his company in assault on a German bunker when he was severely wounded by small arms fire, causing paralysis from the neck down. For the action, he received the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star. Wounded in the spine, doctors initially assumed the wound would be fatal, but with physical therapy eventually regained the use of his legs, although his right arm was paralyzed. He was hospitalized for 39 months. His dreams of being a professional athlete dashed. He earned a law degree from Washburn University in Topeka, Kansas, and went on to pursue a career in politics. One interesting aspect of OCS in the Second World War is that while the Army was still segregated, Officer Candidate School was integrated, and black officer candidates were trained alongside white officer candidates. Bed assignments, for example, were made alphabetically and not by race. But once commissioned, black officers still served in segregated units. One example was Vernon Baker of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Baker attempted to enlist in April 1941, but was denied recruitment because, the website of the National World War II Museum writes, of his race, told by a recruiter that, we don't have quotas for you people. But he persisted and successfully enlisted in June. After infantry training, he was assigned to the 370th Infantry Regiment, where he was selected for OCS, being commissioned a second lieutenant in January 1943. 
In April 1945, Baker was in command of a weapons platoon in Italy when he distinguished himself in a desperate action against a German mountain stronghold. An award citation read, Lieutenant Baker accounted for nine enemy dead soldiers, elimination of three machine gun positions, an observation post, and a dugout. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for his actions. Another graduate of the OCS program also faced challenges due to his race, requiring a different kind of heroism. Jack R. Robinson had been a standout All-American football player at the University of California at Los Angeles when he was drafted in April 1942. Robinson sought admission to OCS, but his application was delayed along with other black candidates, and only an appeal to Truman Gibson, a civilian aide to the Secretary of War, one of the African-American advisors to President Franklin Roosevelt, unofficially called the Black Cabinet, got his application approved. Commissioned in January 1943, he was assigned to the 761st Tank Battalion. In July 1944, Robinson refused a bus driver's order to move to the back of an army bus at Camp Hood, Texas. While buses were still segregated in much of the U.S. South, they were not so on army posts. But when the bus reached its destination, Robinson was arrested by military police. Robinson was court-martialed for six violations of the Articles of War in regard to his initial refusal and attempts to defend himself when investigated. Conviction would have meant at least lengthy imprisonment, but during the trial, cross-examination made it clear that the charges were baseless. He would later write, My lawyer summed up the case beautifully by telling the board that this was not a case involving any violation of the Articles of War, or even of military tradition, but simply a situation in which a few individuals sought to vent their bigotry on a Negro they considered uppity because he had the audacity to exercise rights that belonged to him as an American and a soldier. He was acquitted of all charges, but as a result of the trial he had been reassigned and did not deploy with the 761st Tank Battalion when they became the first black tank regiment of the U.S. Army to enter combat in war. Owing to his court-martial, Robinson was never deployed overseas. Charles Whittlesey returned to the U.S. to much acclaim, but the experience of the lost battalion and his notoriety wore on him. In November 1921, he disappeared from a ship and went to Havana from New York, a presumed victim of suicide. He was 37 years old. Robert Dole was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1960 to the United States Senate in 1968. From January 1995 to June 1996, he was the Senate Majority Leader. He received the Republican nomination for president in 1996, losing to President Clinton in the fall. He passed away just last December at the age of 98. After the war, Vernon Baker worked for the Red Cross. In 1993, the Army established a commission to investigate racial disparity in the awards recognition system and recommended Baker instead receive the Medal of Honor. The medal was awarded to him personally by President Clinton. He passed away from cancer in 2010 at the age of 90. Jack R. Jackie Robinson was honorably discharged in 1944. The former football player chose a career in baseball. In 1947, he was called up to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers, becoming the first black player to break the color barrier in Major League Baseball. He was the MLB Rookie of the Year. He was the National League MVP in 1949, and he retired in 1956 with 141 home runs and 761 runs batted in. He died of a heart attack in 1972 at the age of 53. The need for new officers reduced significantly after the war, but increased again during the time of the Korean conflict, and Army OCS trained some 16,800 officer candidates in 1951 and 1952. The OCS alumni group estimates that more than half of the company-grade officers of the Vietnam War were OCS graduates. Today, OCS is a 12-week course taught at Fort Benning, Georgia, that is available to civilians, enlisted Army personnel, Army Reserve, and Army National Guard troops who have at least a bachelor's degree. 61 graduates of Army OCS have been awarded the Medal of Honor. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy. Check out our community on thehistoryguyguild.locals.com, our webpage at thehistoryguy.com, and our merchandise at teespring.com, or book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo. And if you'd like more episodes on Forgotten History, all you have to do is subscribe.